Hope you've been enjoying our weather today. You're going to see some significant changes, the kind of weather conditions that in order to stay safe, we all have to be careful. Already, Fargo police have issued a warning for drivers to be careful along 52nd Avenue South and 19th Avenue North. Those roads become dangerous when there's blowing snow and poor visibility. Hutch is here to bring us up to speed on what's going on currently, what's to come, and when. Hutch? Well, tonight, we are very quiet here in the valley, but overnight, snow is going to press out of Canada and out from the west as well. And we will have deteriorating conditions as the time we rise and shine. The winds will be gusting upwards of 40, maybe 50 miles per hour out of the north. That's going to cause blizzard conditions, whiteout conditions in places. One to four inches of snowfall. And throughout the day, the wind will gradually subside as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours. That means the blizzard-like impacts will be reduced late Wednesday, but the cold air moves in. And from Wednesday at midnight in the morning, through Wednesday night at 11.59 p.m. We'll see some areas with temperatures falling between 18 and 50 degrees. There's the snow now. Not much to worry about, so get out and get to where you need to be. Quiet this evening in the FM area, mid-20s. Our chance of snow increases as we go beyond the midnight hour. In Grand Forks, it's after, say, 10 p.m. where the chance of snow will increase. And by morning, it will be a different story for all. We have blizzard warnings in effect, winter weather advisories, and an Arctic air bass going to uh, make its way into the valley. I'll have hour by hour details on what you can expect here in just a few more moments. Okay, thanks, Hutch. I didn't realize it was that bad. And knowing that things have not changed, um, I felt like somebody has to be a voice for the kids. A West Fargo daycare center is again under scrutiny after an unannounced inspection of found issues. It comes less than six months after the center's license was suspended, then reopened under a new owner. Valley News Team's Joshua Pagero explains the problems. Teresa Bush says she spent a month and a half at Tiny Town and initially didn't believe the daycare could turn it around. You'd be better off leaving your child with the kid next door. I mean, it, in all honesty. The previous owner, Tiffany Bashaw, had her license revoked last August for several issues, including improper discipline and being short on staff. It forced her to close. The daycare reopened in November under her husband's name. Bush, who called our whistleblower hotline, says the problems still persist. I'm more fearful that something is going to happen. I mean, I'm fearful that somebody is going to get hurt. And because... They seem to know that or they think that they can beat the system. In December, a corrective order was issued by Cass County Social Services outlining more issues and falling in line with what Bush is saying. The kids are just running around playing, climbing on things, knocking over furniture that's not stable. After I was initially told that they'd be willing to speak about some of the allegations concerning Tinatown, we were told by the owner that the only response would be no comment. Two social service inspectors paid Tiny Town a surprise visit and found there wasn't a director present. The owner, who later showed up, admitted that the current director has a full-time job elsewhere. There was no one else qualified to act as a supervisor. It's technically a free-for-all. You walk in, you punch in, you do what you want to do, and then you leave. Tiny Town was given 20 days to fix the issue, which they agreed to do. In the meantime, they continue to operate. In West Fargo, Joshua Peguero, Valley News Live. Several other former employees tell us they have filed new complaints with Cass County Social Services regarding Tiny Town. The agency says it cannot comment on the ongoing investigation. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline and we'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. A former UND professor had his social work license revoked today. Andrew Quinn agreed to have it revoked after being accused of using his position at UND to get involved in a romantic relationship with a student. Another agreement was reached on January 30th to place an employee of Grand Forks County Social Services on a year's probation over a social media post that contained disparaging comments. Four other complaints were filed and heard today. However, the board went into executive session on those. Fargo police are asking for your help finding a suspect in an ongoing robbery investigation. 
On October 31st, officers responded to a robbery at Royal Liquors on Main Avenue. The suspect was wearing a white mask and a black hooded sweatshirt with a white logo on the front. The suspect stole an undisclosed amount of cash and brandished a firearm. If you have any information on who this person is or the incident, call the Fargo Police tip line 241-5777. You can also text a tip to 730-8888. Three people are behind bars after a high-speed chase. Dakota Paulson, Manuel Reyes, and Candace Kelsey are all facing multiple charges, including fleeing police and possession of drugs. It happened just before midnight in Moorhead along 8th Street and I-94. Investigators say the chase reached speeds of at least 80 miles per hour. The three were eventually stopped in Fargo. One man is in jail after stealing a car and later trying to run from police. The same stolen car was involved in a pursuit earlier. Authorities waited for the driver, 18-year-old Abdi Ali, to park before trying to take him into custody. They say Ali rammed several police cars and then took off running before he was arrested. He's being held on multiple charges. The owner of a Fargo restaurant has been sentenced for employing undocumented immigrants. Jose Ramon Gutierrez, who owns Mango's Restaurant, was sentenced to two years of probation. He employed two cooks at Mango's from May of 2018 to January 31st of 2019. They were working illegally in the United States. Officials say Gutierrez paid them in cash and kept them off the restaurant's payroll. It was a record-breaking year in Minnesota as far as drugs being taken off the streets. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety seized more than 1,700 pounds of meth, 106 pounds of cocaine, and 55 pounds of heroin. Police say the majority of heroin taken in is laced with the deadly substance fentanyl. Authorities say most of the meth and cocaine found in Minnesota are from Mexico and South America. Ottertail County and a sheriff's deputy are being sued for $2 million. The federal lawsuit has been filed by Cameron Bowden, who claims he suffered from a serious brain injury during an arrest in December of 2018. Authorities have been looking for him in connection with a bar fight. They found him at his home in Parker's Prairie. One deputy's body camera showed Jer uh, Deputy Jeremiah Kripech punching Bowden several times in the face while sitting on top of him. Bowden says that he had a series of surgeries after suffering the brain injury. Three people who could have been exposed to the coronavirus are actively being monitored by the North Dakota Health Department. No cases have been confirmed in the state, but the three people returned to the state from China and could have possibly, possibly been exposed to the virus. The three are voluntarily distancing themselves from the general public and are being checked on every day by health officials. We've just received word that West Fargo is closing ca ca classes tomorrow as a result of the impending weather. We'll have more, I, I guess, as the evening goes on. Later on Valley News Live at 6, four years after his death, how Fargo police again honored fallen officer Jason Mosier. Blizzard conditions will encompass the valley as we head into the daybreak hours. That morning commute can be quite messy. Winter weather advisories elsewhere. Your forecast is straight ahead.